I subscribe to a couple of gentlemen who are at the opposite end of the spectrum to each other about EVs and subsequently hear both sides of the argument. Whilst I agree that an EV would be good around town as they do not generate tailpipe emissions, there are some serious issues that need to be resolved before anyone should be plonking down their hard-earned for a car that is totally dependent on the grid. The problems that have been highlighted are What happens if there is an emergency? You must evacuate your home. The power has gone off and your EV is not fully charged. You have a real problem if that is your only transport. The charging infrastructure for an EV is almost non-existent in country areas of Australia with big distances between charging stations, then you will have to take your turn to use them, providing they are working of course. If your EV catches fire, it emits major noxious fumes and it is subject to thermal runaway that cannot be controlled until the vehicle completely burns out. What happens if an EV catches fire in a crowded underground car park? In the event of a fire, the temperature of the fire may reach 2,600 degrees C. That is enough to melt steel and badly affect concrete to the point where it is structurally unsound. Insurance companies take the issue of fire in an EV very seriously and are now even mentioning it in their advertising. They are not doing this without reason. There are very few repairers with the skill and facilities to repair EVs. An EV generally costs at least $20,000 more than the equivalent ICE vehicle. An EV is totally useless if you live in a multi-storey apartment without any charging facilities. Battery replacement will cost more than the total value of the vehicle after only a few years. There is no adequate facilities currently for the correct disposal of discarded EV batteries. The grid is totally incapable of handling the power load of everybody charging their EV every evening when they get home from work. If you have a vehicle that can accelerate like a supercar but weighs as much as a truck, then you're going to have some interesting effects on both the road structure and the wear factor to the suspension components of the car. An EV is totally useless for towing anything further than about 100 kilometers, and then it will take up to four hours to recharge it. Not too many boat ramps or caravan parks have those facilities. Generally speaking, the range of EVs is usually about 20% less than that range quoted by the manufacturer. Most EVs are built in China and use power generated by highly polluting coal-fired power stations, making a mockery of their environmental credentials. There are very few manufacturers making anything other than luxury vehicles in the EV category, therefore they are all pretty highly priced. When will someone produce a competent mini-EV for city use? As for Jaguar going up market in 2025 and completely dumping the internal combustion engine range that they currently market, all I can say is, good luck. In the meantime, the initial enthusiasm for EVs has waned as most of the early adopters have bought those gadgets and the rest of the market is sitting back as they see so many EV problems being well publicised. Major manufacturers have been forced to reduce production and drop prices in order to try and get the numbers up to make it economical. In the meantime, in Britain, the end deadline for new internal combustion vehicles has been shifted to 2035 instead of 2030. I can see that this cutoff will go even further out, or maybe even dropped altogether. Meanwhile, here in Australia, there has been little discussion on the issue of a cutoff date or, for that matter, even more importantly, improving the grid, which is all dumped into the too-hard basket. In my view, Jaguar has jumped the gun by going all out for EVs at such short notice. Plus, they have said that the pricing will be going a long way up market. They are dumping decades of expertise in internal combustion engines and going all out for change to principles of propulsion that should have been allowed to develop according to market demand. As a consequence, I predict that the mark is in for a very rough time indeed. Please comment as you see it, and like and subscribe to Curious Jag.